We all know the reason half the people on the planet were watching the Super Bowl last night and it wasn't for the football game. And it wasn't for Taylor Swift. It was for Deadpool. And I was actually pretty surprised how early in the broadcast that first screen came up. It's like, oh my God, they're dropping the Deadpool trailer right now. <clears throat> this trailer was magnificent. I absolutely loved it because remember, this is just the first trailer, just the first one. Teaser. Teaser, really. I mean, longer than your general teaser, but this is just the first one, right? Remember, we were just talking about this for the uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Like the first one was just give you a sense of the tone, give you a sense of what the look is going to be like. And then the second trailer, that's where you get your meat. So this was just the first trailer. <clears throat> And I thought there was, good, there was a couple of things they had to establish in this first trailer. One, establish that thing I said a little bit earlier. That guys, don't worry. This is not going to be a sanitized Deadpool now that it's under Disney. Mm. And again, just seconds into the commercial, he's talking about pegging. So it's like, okay, check. This is not a sanitized version of Deadpool. We're, we're, we're pretty safe there. Uh, show some familiar faces. We Negasonic's there. I was very happy to see Colossus there. Shatterstar is there. What's the name of the dude from X Force? The average guy, the neighbor guy. <laughs> he was, yeah. What was his name I like? Forgot. Frank or Paul? I can't remember what his name was. Peter. Peter. Peter was his name. Seeing Peter there, and uh, uh, what was what was the taxi driver's name? It wasn't Dopinder. Like Dopinder, Dopinder, Dopinder yeah. right? I was gonna say Mohinder. No, he was from Heroes. Uh, Dopinder. Seeing him in there. Of course, seeing uh, the girlfriend there, although it doesn't look like she's his girl anymore. I think their relationship ended. I think I think their relationship ended because he talks about it was a rough year, and then when he's blown out the candle, she goes, "Happy birthday, buddy!" Oh. Right. So I, I think I think maybe that's part of what's been his rough year is lost. But that being said, then the TVA shows up. A lot of people had been speculating because, of course, at the end of Deadpool two, which. Jonathan Voiko had never seen the post credit scene to Deadpool 2 before. Yeah, I, I, I never got to the post credit so I'm like, oh, this was a thing. Yeah, so Jonathan asked me today, so do you think at some, they're going to say at some point Deadpool did some time travel? I'm like, you've never seen the post credit scene, have you? He's like, no. And then we watch, it's like, well, there's why the TV... So a lot of people have been speculating that the TVA may be a part of it because he's done that. Of course, you got the uh, Emmy Award winning actor from Succession in there now. I made that joke that uh, after leaving uh, Gojo, he was promoted to the TVA. He now runs I just the TVA. Wanna, I just assume in my mind that it's the same character. Or the TVA is a subsidiary of Gojo. Yeah, because it is, after all, uh, a multiverse. It's all connected. It's all connected. Now, I, I've seen some people saying, well, maybe this is like Fox's version of the TVA. Remember, the TVA exists outside of timelines and realities. There's only yeah. one TVA, so this is, this is the TVA. They, and man, I thought you got to make some jokes at, in the trailer, in the first trailer, you got to make a couple of jokes at Marvel's and Disney's expense. And they went for it. And like right in it, we have Wade saying what a lot of audiences are saying. I'm going to, I'm your Messiah. I'm going to save your little cinematic universe. I am Marvel's Jesus, <laughs> which is like one of the greatest lines one of the greatest lines ever. And then, of course, the look on the dude's face. Uh, the coming, And then Pyro! Pyro from X-Men 2 pops up in it, which I thought was amazing to see. And actually, I didn't recognize him at first. And then the second time we were watching the trailer, my buddy Ryan, who was over watching the Super Bowl, he's like, wait a minute. That's actually Pyro. I'm like, I'm like, you're right. Holy and Stanford with the, with the goggles. Yeah, with the goggles and everything. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I saw a lot of stuff, like a lot of headlines saying, Marvel fans believe they've spotted Doctor Doom in the trailer. And I, I, I know you got that image, Jonathan. Oh, yeah. But like a lot of people, like a headline's running, Marvel fans believe they've spotted Doctor Doom in the trailer. That's some Doctor Doom. Guys, yeah, that no. is not Doctor. That is just some dude in a random mask. That's just, that's just cannon fodder. This is what SAG movie makers do all the time. SAG, you just put some guys in masks so you don't have to pay them SAG rate. I mean, it's that that is not believe. I don't know the movie. Ryan Reynolds hasn't sent me the script, but I can tell you with 100 percent certainty that is not Dr. Doom. No. But I'm sure the 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 agency that cut this trailer was like people think it's Doom. 
You know what I mean? The, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. Disney will do that. But, I mean, like. It's just it, more clicks for the uh, trailer. Yeah. They want to see the engagement. It's 1,000% not Dr. Doom. Um, but that being said, they a lot. there's a lot of blood in the trailers. A one shot of Deadpool, like, in the back of a car, like, which is blood splattered everywhere in the car. And they I mean, never, he got headshots. Oh, yeah. Drives. Headshots with blood splatter and the whole bit. I mean, this picture is interesting. You right. know, we were talking about is this is this actually do they go to that scene from Age of yeah, Ultron? Is that the forest that Age of Ultron starts with, with the Avengers fighting their Which, way to the base? It would make sense. To, now, again, or it's we, just a forest because there's a lot right, of forest. It's just, or it's just a forest. But I would say this: I would say that obviously we, we know that there's an uh, an X Men slash Brotherhood of Evil mutant in there in Pyro. But what is the thing that they would have to fix? The first thing they'd have to fix. What would the first thing that Deadpool want to fix in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? These people aren't miracles. <laughs> They're, They're mutants. <laughs> so where would you go? The first place that you saw them where they were called miracles in that Hydra base. Right. So that, in my mind, that would be the first place. That I mean, that could be a way they bring Wanda back if they wanted to. Right. Right. <clears throat> I, I I mean it's it's a possibility. I mean because a lot what of that would do is, if you did that, then everything that's happened from Wanda since the beginning of Age of Ultron wouldn't have happened. But then it would alter the course of the entire Marvel universe from the beginning of Age of Ultron forward. I also noticed when Deadpool's lying on the ground. There's you see on the left of yeah. that image. That is the cover of Secret Wars. One of the issues of, of the, Secret yes, Wars. The new, the new Secret Wars. Right. Not not the original the older Hickman one. Run. Right. Is sitting there on there the now. ground beside him, which is very cool that they've got. I, I'm sure it's just I, I don't look, every time there's any kind of an Easter egg in any right. Marvel, every everybody's looking for the meaning in it. Sometimes an Easter egg is just an Easter egg. Uh, and and I'm, I'm I feel pretty good that that's probably just an Easter egg. But who knows? Who knows? Could have more deeper. But I love the. There's a couple things I'm I'm really happy about. If you had asked me yesterday, yesterday morning, do you think they should show Wolverine in the trailer? I would have said, of course you need to show Wolverine in the trailer. But you know what? The fact that they never really show him other than this last yeah. little thing and the like back, maybe of the back of his head. Yes, yeah, patch. Yeah. And. And that I like, you know what? That was actually perfect. Just the way the shadows are. Just don't just stand there, you dumb ape. Help me up. Give me a hand. And then the blades come up. No, on the other hand, I'm fine. No problem. No problem. Then he goes swing. I like perfect. I wouldn't have thought so yesterday morning, but after seeing it done this way, this was a great first trailer. The next one will have to give us a little bit more context. Give us more. Give us some actual Hugh Jackman saying some lines. And stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the second trailer. As a first trailer, I thought it was just great. And the only trailer I thought that was better than it at the Super Bowl was one that was a second trailer. The the second Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes trailer. Other than that, this was a brilliant first trailer. And you know what, Rob? This thing has already got like well over 20 million views in like 12 hours. Um, and I think... This trailer has has already proven what you and I have been saying for a long time. There is no such thing as comic book movie fatigue. There is mediocre movie fatigue. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. On average, it takes about 30 days for a person to break their New Year's resolution. So if saving money was on your 2024 list, your odds aren't looking that great. Luckily, I have a 100% guaranteed way to save you money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. I've told you guys many times that after switching to Mint Mobile, I am spending less than a third on my cell bill than I used to with a major carrier. Say goodbye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. All Mint plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And don't worry about having to change phones or numbers. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. So guys, to get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash 
Campia. That's mintmobile.com slash Campia. Cut your wireless bills to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Campia. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Audiences are getting tired of mediocre stuff, of okay at best. You know, when Marvel at one point was putting out banger after banger after banger and putting out great experience after great experience. Lately, it's been a mixed bag, coin toss, maybe they give me... But then this trailer drops and everybody's hyped. Everybody's hyped. And who knows, Rob, maybe Wade Wilson is Marvel Jesus. Maybe he will save the MCU after all. Anyway, Rob, what were your thoughts about the trailer? What stood out to you? Well, there's... Uh, for me, I have to say that I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very funny, but... I did see a potential problem in the sense that it seems like this movie is is really going into the multiverse deep, especially all the things that Loki has established. You know, the end of time, we're outside, the he who remains, the castle, the, that that land there. The and void. The void. And, and the thing is, if the void... Is this like the new, are they insinuating it's the new, it's Battle World from this, the Hickman run of Secret Wars where everyone's going to wind up? And and because it looked like the scene with Pyro, it looks like a post-apocalyptic wasteland because what's interesting is everybody can get dumped there. Every time that a timeline is trimmed or pruned or whatever, you could dump potentially every single character in the world or in the universe, the multiverse could wind up here. And that's interesting, but is that too reliant on the on the the TV shows? Because one of the things that the Deadpool movies have always, the two Deadpool movies have always done is that regardless of the superhero shenanigans, they've actually told a, its own story that exists outside of all of the superhero shenanigans. Including like, the Fox superhero universe. Uh, absolutely, yeah. uh, absolutely. And so the thing about the Deadpool universe, I, like I was so impressed. I love the first Deadpool. I, but it also told a legitimately great story about a guy. In a way, it's like Iron Man 1, in that for all the shenanigans and all the references and all the fourth wall breaking and all the, it was kind of this romantic story about a man who was wronged, who was seeking revenge and wanted to be together with the woman he loved. So, and that's the only thing that I worry about is that this movie might lean, and I, I have no evidence to support this idea other than this trailer seemed a lot, it, it, it didn't give us a sense, however, what I am hoping is this entire movie could be one big meta commentary on the state of the world and the actual merger between Fox and Disney and what does that mean to the larger world, our world. Mm. And the whole thing could be just the most vicious send-up of corporate mergers. And they seem to be – I hope that they're going to really play with this idea because that's what it seemed like to me. And I'm like, this could be one of the most scathing indictments of the American corporatization of all of our beautiful businesses ever. And I think that's, a, that's where they're going. And if that's where it's going to go, this could be one of the most anarchic and anarchistic uh, subversive films we've seen in a long time. And I'm so there for that. Uh, one of the things that I was a little bit afraid of going into Deadpool 3, I, I've been saying this for a while, is does it go too meta? Does it go too uh, multiverse? Does it go too much of stuff like that? And and, and that is a worry that I still have. And, I, and I'm not going to feel better about it until I see the movie itself. But I will say this. One of the mistakes Marvel has been making over the last couple of years is that reliance on, you got to have watched our Disney Plus show in order to be able to watch this. But you know what? I watched this trailer and I was like, here's what was brilliant about it. If... Somebody was watching this trailer that had never seen Loki, never heard of the TVA, none of that kind of stuff, right? It didn't matter. Uh, somebody just watching this trailer got it. Oh, this is some kind of interdimensional police, and they're recruiting Wade. Because Deadpool to... doesn't know. Yeah, because Deadpool so doesn't know. So weird Deadpool. That's right. It was told kind of from Deadpool's perspective. Like you didn't have to you didn't have to watch a single minute of Loki to go, okay, this is some kind of interdimental police force, and they're recruiting Wade. To save the universe, or and putting like that. McFadden in there, Easy. yes, brilliant. And the way so good. the way he the way his performance just in a few. I've loved him since he was in MI MI uh, five, the TV series, and he's great way before Succession. But the fact that they cast him in that role, I thought was genius. Yeah, that I, I was think a genius. It, it was move. great because you're filling the shoes in a way 
of Owen Wilson's yes. Mobius character, who is so likable. So you got to have another agent and instantly like, love him. People are going to recognize him from Succession. And even if you never watched Loki, this didn't lose you. You knew it. By the way, I also want to throw this out there too. I'm seeing a lot of people saying, oh my God, the villain is going to be Professor X's sister. Cassandra Nova from Look, New X-Men. That may, it's possible that that could be Cassandra. All it was was a bald head. Right. And everybody knows there could only be two possible people that could are bald. It could be Moondragon. It could be Lex Luthor for all we know. I mean, so yes, it, it's theoretically possible it could be Nova, Cassandra Nova. But all, I just want to caution my fellow, all it was was the back of a bald head. It literally <laughs> could be a brand new character. It could be anybody. There are not only two. A bald head does not only equal two possibilities. Although I will saying. say when she was introduced, and in, I want to say Grant Morrison's new X-Men run, um, you know, they brought the idea that Xavier had a twin, an in, in utero twin that we didn't know about. I love that idea because I remember reading that comic. She was a very formidable bad person. Yes. And uh, I would love to see that brought in, but it would require – it's the kind of thing that, like the comics itself – it's not like some established villain when it showed up that um, or the ancient one. There you go. I, that, that's which, where my mind went to. Which, by the way, Angel and and Ritwick in the live chat is saying Obadiah Stane. Yeah, oh, <laughs> it seemed like yeah, a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if it is, if it is the ancient one, I mean, that would certainly class up the joint, and it would make sense because she's already talked about the Infinity Stones yeah, and all. Yeah, obviously. I mean, I, I I would love to see. You know, if, if they have Michael Pena in this movie and have him explain the MCU to Wade. Like, let me tell you where things are. Okay, so this guy, man. <laughs> He's a TV agent now. <laughs> I, I honestly, listen, every fan, every fan thinks they know best, right? right? About this is what the MCU should have. We're all like that. We're all stupid that way. Like, we all do that. My I'm the fan, so I know best thing has always been how are you not leveraging Michael Pena more in this? Luis is one of the great characters, and he can be a very meta character because of the way he does that. Like, I don't know how you don't start off every MCU movie with, okay, let me catch you up to speed. And like, just Michael Pena. He might have had like, other external so reasons, you know, but, you know, there's the channel Emergency Awesome. I always watch that channel to get my more up to date Marvel gossip. Yeah. But, um, and that seems pretty accurate for the most part. That's why I tell, sometimes stay away. But I have to say that. This does look like they've given him carte blanche to come up with everything that he wants. And I will say this, mm. of all the people that are running this between Hugh Jackman, um, Ryan Reynolds, our patron saint, and of course, Sean Levy. Yeah. Th the fact that they can just sit there and make shit up and make it happen. And I, the same writers who did the Deadpool movies. The, yeah, with Ryan I just Reynolds. hope they keep it all together because the potential, this trailer did tell me the potential for it to spin off into crazy oblivion. They've got to have some kind because the Deadpool, both Deadpool movies had an emotional grounding to them. Mm -hmm. But I'm convinced more than ever we're going to get a musical number. Oh, I'd be there I think even that. from that teaser, you have emotional grounding because you actually see some like pain in Wade's yeah. face. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that, the that, fact the, that he's wearing a wig is hilarious. I love that wig. Oh, my. <laughs> and I love how you see get pulled. It's like the yeah, first thing he, he loses. loses. It. Did, oh, oh by the way, the joke is just. While you were unconscious, you defecated yourself. Yeah. And I says, I wasn't unconscious. I was unconscious. Anyway, like, it was, <laughs> it's like, this is such a way thing to say. So what are you going to say, Jonathan? Sorry. Oh, I, oh, let's not forget about the uh, alternate title. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Here's the most exciting thing about this to me. And we've talked about this ad nauseum for years. One of the great things about the Deadpool movies is the visceral, viral marketing campaigns that they do with all this weird, crazy stuff, right? <laughs> so right after the trailer drops, Hugh Jackman puts that up on his social media. Wolverine and asshole, right? And I, I was telling Rob, Rob and I were talking about this this morning. I said, I think we are in, because when does it come out again? June or July? June. July. Is it July? Yeah. I thought it was June. July. Okay. I'll End of it, July. I'll take it now, but. So you know what? I think you're right. July. Oh, it's so the 26th. What's that? It's July 26th. <clears throat> okay, so. Yeah. We're in February, March, April, May, June, July. So we're five months away. But I think we are in for five months of that. Yeah. And I am almost as excited about these next five months 
And just seeing what Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds do. They've already do. they've pre-planned it. Oh, now yeah. they know that they can pre-plan all this. And the, the fact that I even love the broken friendship bracelet. Oh, my God. The tea, Best and the thing, friends, that says. And then the, the stuff that they're saying underneath that. I forget what Ryan Reynolds said. I'm like, you're towing the line there, buddy. You're, put, you're going far. It's so good. Uh, it's just, it's, it's so fun. And I am literally, like I said, I... I'm never excited just for the marketing campaign of a movie, but I am legitimately like, remember Deadpool two and Ryan Reynolds put out this video of him in his Deadpool costume playing with a cable toy and a Deadpool toy. And he just went through this, like it was just ridiculous, but it was like some of the most fun stuff on the internet. And by the way, the whole reason to have the internet for a couple of years there was just to pay attention to the Ryan Reynolds, <laughs> Hugh Jackman rivalry. Right? It was like one of the best things online. And we're in for five months of this. And I hope it's nonstop. You might say, oh, you put out too much stuff. Maybe we get tired. No, we're not going to get tired of it. Not if it's it's jokes. Not if it's funny. Yeah. Not if it's funny. And especially if they make a lot of Disney jokes. If Ryan Reynolds makes a lot of Disney. Like, I want to see a picture of Ryan Reynolds literally at Disneyland pissing on a bush. Maybe that bald head was well, Bob that, Chapek. That, that's a little meta, The John. bald head was Bob Chapek was the villain of the universe the whole time. <laughs> that's the new one. Bob Iger would totally do that. Make Bob Chapek the villain. Uh, God, man, I I am just so excited for this movie. I, <clears throat> And you know what? If you had asked me a week ago, I would have said they're gonna the movie's gonna be great. I think it's gonna be really fun and funny. I mean, it's the same writers. It's Ryan Reynolds. The movie, the movies Ryan has made with Sean Levy have been great. Whether it's Free Guy, which is awesome, or Adam Project, which was surprisingly good to me, not as good as Free Guy, but but really good nonetheless. I would say the movie's gonna be great, but I don't think it's actually gonna change anything in the MCU other than bringing Deadpool in. Well, that's what I would have said a week ago. I'm actually wondering if they do change some things in the if they kind of reset the universe. And of course, Ryan did a little bit of a a little bit of a Black Adam kind of joke, but he didn't say the hierarchy is about to change. But he, what was the line he said specifically? He said I'm about to change everything in your little cinematic universe or something like that. Yeah. He didn't say the hierarchy of power is about to change. See, a week ago I would have thought, okay, but nothing of substance will change. Like he saves Wanda and saves Quicksilver, and now they are in the MCU. But now I'm not so sure about that. They might actually substantively change something in this universe. Mutants. <clears throat> mutants. I mean, mutants. Listen, this is we actually have the name of a mutant in the title for the first time. Well, I guess when they established that Ms. Marvel is actually a mutant, maybe they did that already. But now we got Wolverine in the title. There he is. I oh, oh, big question. Do you think that was Mad Rapport? Yes, where he finds him playing poker or yeah. playing cards or something. Yeah, because because that I mean, classic Wolverine white tux. Yeah, and, and, and Madripoor was such a big part of when the Wolverine solo comic started, and and obviously they went there in Falcon and Winter Soldier, so they've established it. And the thing about Madripoor is it's a fictional, uh, almost like a Gotham City type of a place. It's a yeah. port. There's city. that classic, that classic, classic. Wolverine yeah, absolutely. Patch look. And 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 Wolverine has a long history going to and Madripoor is a, a place where everything can happen. It's not it's not um, New York, you know. It's not an American city. So there's all see there you go. There's a lot of stuff that can happen there. I hope there's some good Canadian jokes too because both Deadpool and Wolverine are. Uh, I'd love good to see Canadian the Ten kids. Rings come back. Do you think we get like a very subtle under the breath Wrexham reference? Oh, for sure. There has to there has to be I mean, some. That Self, town, some self-deprecation jokes. In not there to too. mention to be payback for, in a good way for Rex because they promote Deadpool because they love them. You know. Oh right. yeah. Oh yeah. I think the whole Rexham fan song about yeah. them is is Rob is Deadpool and Rob McElhenney. Well, not Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. Right. I mean, but here's something in within Deadpool continuity. Deadpool killed Ryan Reynolds before he Dude, bought Rexham. That was that's yeah. that's true. <laughs> I mean, he kill, he kills him in the post credit scene of Deadpool too. I that, I died or today yeah, when you, I saw I that. Yeah, you've never seen that. <laughs> but, and like as Ryan. we're watching, as I'm watching the Deadpool two post credit scene with Jonathan, who had never seen it, yeah. it's all funny. But we're just I'm just waiting for it to get to him reading just, the Green Lantern script. So who owns Wrexham in the Deadpool universe? Rob McElhenney all by himself. Yeah, oh, Rob McElhenney and, and right. Hugh Jackman. And Hugh Jackman. Oh, that, that, oh my god. Okay, that <laughs> oh would god. be a hilarious you just joke because that also wraps in the rivalry. 
Uh, have yeah. Rob McElhenney sing the, and, and you, the and best you, partner yeah. a guy could have. She yep. Jackman. Oh, yeah. that, okay. Which, by the way, would not really break the fourth wall. No, not really. Or would <laughs> in the best way. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.